a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me, and whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Do you hear the subtle shift of message in this week's Gospel reading? For five weeks since Easter, our Sunday readings have focused on the joy of Easter, the awe and amazement of the resurrection, showing us, as Father L said just last week, who God is. Truly awesome and extraordinary. Today, we turn a corner and we ask, in light of the Easter miracle, who are we to become? And how are we to live as persons of the resurrection? Our lives have changed. The world has changed. In those early days, surely there were some who were asking, how do we just get back to normal, to what was normal? Yet deep down, the disciples knew that was the wrong question. Rather, how do we forge a new life for ourselves and for others in light of the change that has rocked the world? Jesus, life, death, and resurrection. I don't know about you, but these days I feel caught between these same two questions. What and how can we all do to get back to normal? Or how do I forge a new path, a new way of thinking, a new way of being in the world that is totally different from what it was just two months ago? I'll freely admit, I haven't let go of what normal used to be, and I long for it. I yearn for it. I, I, I yearn seeing you at church, hugging, shaking hands with many of you, sharing coffee and donuts, receiving communion, going to meetings in the parish center, spending Tuesdays with my new granddaughter sharing a family meal with my sons and their families, taking a day trip to the beach, watching live sports on television and having guy talk about the games. When, oh when, can I do all these things again? But no, it's clear I am called to change, we are called to change. Whether or not we get back to doing those normal things again, it seems that our future beckons us not just to return to normal, but to something new and different. Problem is, right now, we're in that liminal time, that in-between time when basic answers are unknowable, unavailable. We don't yet know what the new normal is. And so I, I don't know how to respond. I'm not sure how to behave, how to think, how to feel. I'm learning, I'm learning some things. <laughs> Basic Zoom etiquette, working from home again and coexisting at home, remembering to take my face mask with me when I go out, how to pace myself on how much news to consume, washing my hands, over and over and over again. 
You know, the early Christians and the original audience of John's gospel were in exactly the same boat, caught between two questions. Can we get back to normal? Or what is the new normal? And John's twofold response to the early Christians is also just what I need, what we need. One, love. Allow yourself to be guided by love of God and love of one another. We simply can't go wrong with love, no matter how upended we feel. In fact, many of you have upped your game in works of mercy, charity, and love for those who most need it. I am deeply inspired by the one who brings lunch to Catherine in the office at least once a week during this pandemic. The one who checks on parishioners on foot when she can't reach them by phone or text. The one who is doggedly determined to make sure all patrons of our food pantry experience extraordinary hospitality now and in the future. And there are so many others. This is what it means to be guided by love. And two, help. The Holy Spirit will help. John makes it clear that I am not alone. We are not alone. We will receive the Comforter who showers us with the strength needed to face adversity and the peace required to simply live in the moment. With love as our guide and with the help of the Holy Spirit, like the disciples and the early Christians, we too are called to change. Yet we can take heart in our song for the day. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me, and I will give you rest.